Hello everyone and how's it going? So welcome to Raisington, first of all. Uh, today we are going to look at designing Netflix. Let me just mention you the approach a bit, like how we are going to uh, go with this. We will have a basic template that you will realize as we go through it that uh, we will have our requirements, functional requirements and uh, non-functional requirements, estimation, storage, tables, APIs and these kind of things. We, we won't dive deep into these things um, more uh, like some specific things like APIs we might not do in this uh, design but to, for something else like designing Instagram it is necessary to do that. It doesn't make much sense here. Uh, we'll come to that why it doesn't make sense in some time. Plus, uh, secondly, we have to understand that each and every service has some core features. And while this is a system design of Netflix and we have to design the uh, Netflix and its um, some core features and some side features not very uh, important but we have to wrap up this entire design pretty quickly and then dive deep into some of the areas to show our expertise to uh, do some more optimizations and then do a, a revise of everything like whatever we have done and at the end uh, we can mention something like things which are out of scope but we can improve more or you know as an engineer those will be the points that you would like to uh, engineer them more properly and optimize them because they are at a, such a massive scale uh, if you actually work at Netflix. So with that, let's get started. First up, we have the requirements. I think it's too big. Yeah, so first up, we have requirements. We have functional requirements, FRN, non-functional requirements. If you look at Netflix, there are not many different fancy features in its core working. It's a simple platform where you can uh, go on Netflix, stream high quality movies with minimum buffering. That's the point. Like even if your internet connection is not the best of the best, you should be able to stream Netflix uh, in good quality. That being said, Netflix does not stream movies uh, in very low qualities like 360p or 480 pixels like YouTube does. And we are not going to uh, do that as Netflix also does not. It will at the minimum uh, stream at 720 pixels. So we are going to consider that and one more quality above that as our streaming uh, quality is concerned. Then for minimum buffering, we are going to focus on that also. You can say that this is sort of a non-functional requirement, but this is a very, very core feature and everything that we are going to do will be in, uh, will be uh, keeping in mind of that. I think I could have framed the sentence differently. Uh, then that when that's done, uh, we can focus on non-functional requirements. Another important thing that I think we can mention that is actually out of scope, but you can look at that. That is uh, searching. Even though Netflix does not have like so, so many videos uh, like YouTube, because on YouTube, anybody can create videos. And every time you will try to search something, there is so much content. Whereas when it comes to Netflix, there are a limited number of movies and series or videos in general, which we can search through. Also, Netflix will, you know, not search in everything. It will have kind of a timeout thing like search for this much time and then just return the results, even if we are not returning everything so that uh, we can paginate the results and everything. So we will look into that as well, like how can that be optimized? But that is the scope of our requirements at this point. 
it is also important that to not have too many functional requirements as you might have to dive into depth in two very different directions uh, also it does not have those minor features like you know whatsapp has that you can have read uh, delivered at the blue tick single tick these kind of features or is the other person online that kind of feature it doesn't have those things it has notifications which it keeps sending to users uh, but that is also not very tied specific to Netflix and is a very general feature and can be designed on its own. A separate uh, system design question itself. Uh, then if we come to uh, non-functional requirements, if we look at Netflix in very specific, one of the most important thing is that it has to have low latency, right? Second thing, if you think about Netflix is, does it have to be very highly available? I don't think so. Like it is not a platform like internal hospital system or a flight booking system or something like that. It is just a streaming platform. If it is down for a few hours to few days in a year, uh, that is like two to three nines of availability. Two to three nines is like six hours to around 3.6 days in a year and that is totally fine like if it is down to that much even though Netflix is such a great platform and it is actually uh, down only I would say it has around three nines of availability that is like down only for 3.6 uh, around six hours a year that is pretty commendable if you look at consistency there you do not have to have so much consistency uh, plus plus the point is that when you are having user data even if there is some level of inconsistency that is eventual consistency it is fine even on eventual consistency level it can be on the lower side on the Netflix if you actually think um, one of the major thing is to handle uh, the releases of hot movies like Game of Thrones series or uh, some other thing that has high expectations and the platform is going to face a very high load so that makes sense durability uh, is because if, if you see from users point of view the only data they store is which is very critical is uh, payments information otherwise if the user uh, is not able to get very personalized recommendation that is fine if they're not able to say their viewing history that is fine so it is like if it, even if it is okay it's totally acceptable now next up we move to the estimation part just to give you a very quick overview we have done here the estimation in pretty neat detail and if you will go through this, you will have very much confidence on how big of the system we are actually designing, what kind of database we can choose and everything. Uh, but that being said, I would recommend you to do the estimation as much as you can. If you're not comfortable with doing too much in-depth ca uh, calculation, that's totally fine. You just can get a few numbers and that would be okay. Now ask your interviewer and confirm uh, like if they align with these kind of details or assumptions that is total users around 200 million that is a fair number 200 million daily active users uh, five percent i think that's that's not a bad number uh, also keeping in mind that people do not watch netflix all the time they also go to theaters and with the you know um, so many new platforms coming in on ott uh, five person seems like a good number daily active users then there is another assumption you should definitely discuss this with your interviewer that 10k videos we are assuming are on netflix total number of videos on netflix is 10k videos that is across all movies and all series we are assuming 
that netflix stores standard version that is like around uh, 1080p and hd that is 4k earlier we used to consider hd as 1080p now we consider hd as something higher it keeps on improving as technology improves so assumption is that we have 10k videos on netflix each of them is one hour long and we store standard version of it and hd version of it both the qualities not more than that uh, we are estimating but that's fine then when it comes to estimating the storage of these videos we can say um, that a sd video let me find it the sd version video standard uh, quality can be 10 gb per hour and the hd one can be 20 gb per hour uh, i think that's uh, like totally fair kind of assumption and estimation of the sort then we have multiplying this by 10,000 because we have 10k videos and we are getting around 300 TB 300 TB is not a very large amount of data if you compare it to something like YouTube because it has petabytes of data even thousands of petabytes of data which is much more in comparison to this so we understand that it, this is not so much data but so it will um, help us we are on the advantage that we don't have to uh, do too much to have low latency right we, we have to note this part that because we have we don't have too much video like YouTube we don't have to work too hard to have a very low latency now if I talk about the storage of metadata uh, metadata is more like uh you know like one is that we have movies these videos second is that we have uh, user data that would be you can say that each and every single user has some 10 kb of we uh, data on the platform whereas each movie has the the user data i have not mentioned here but i'm estimating the metadata of each move uh, so first up I'm considering the users metadata and then I'm considering for the movies okay so storage of metadata 200 million users are there if I assume that 10 KB of data for each user that would be around 2 terabytes of data it is not a humongous level of data because Netflix has 200 million users and spread across the globe not a very wide data plus 10k videos 10kb each 100 mb uh, this doesn't seem okay right because they're okay this 100 uh, 10kb and you have uh, 10 mb 100 MB. yeah that seems right though you can have like much more data than 10kb maybe like 100 kb but the the numbers will mostly be in the around the same range like even if you consider like we might store start storing tags a new kind of information around the movies by which we can you know have more specific tags not just comedy but in comedy also you can have various versions and you can attach that to each movie and in in that sort you can have much more metadata which will help you find a better uh, more suitable personalized recommendation for the end user so you can have something like 100 KB and you will have something like 1000 MB that would be almost 1 GB that that seems reasonable now if I come to the bandwidth part right we have estimated the total video storage now we have estimated the total metadata that is user data everything like viewing history and everything and then we have uh, video metadata like the title and everything also you can see that we are not separately estimating the thumbnail that we have or the trailers that we have of Netflix videos on the platform because they wouldn't 
budge this estimate a lot it would still be in the same ballpark range uh, now if we come to the bandwidth part uh, this is the calculation we go through like total video size delivered per second right so if we have 10 million users who are active every day based on the estimation that we have 5 percent to 200 million active every day let's say that they watch one video in a day that's one video is like 1 GB now 10 million people are watching one hour long video every day and average size of this is like uh, we have this and this so let's uh, keep it keep our estimations on the whole uh, higher side it's always uh, best to keep it on the higher side right uh, so if we uh, assume that 20 GB or we even can take an average of these two like we have 10 GB and 20 GB let's assume 50-50% uh, and around 15 GB so 10 million into 15 GB uh, divided by the number of seconds in a day we will get something around 1.7 TB per second it's a very very high bandwidth like a bandwidth in terms of terabytes but also I would like to mention that platforms like Hotstar see much more bandwidth than this when they are streaming an IPL final match or uh, an India match in World Cup final or semi-final or big um, knockout matches they have like 75 terabytes of data or even more 75 terabytes of bandwidth or even more uh, that being said this is a very huge number of bandwidth but not a very wild number in comparison to platforms like Hotstar or something like uh, even YouTube YouTube has a much much greater uh, bandwidth because they have much more videos much more users and everything so if we come to the CDN size so let me just uh, mention like how are we assuming this we are assuming that we are going to put 20% of our total videos into our CDN why because there's a 80 20 rule like Pareto's rule like 80% of the users will consume these 20% of videos so keeping that in mind and even you know like Netflix can suggest Netflix can control at a level what all videos it will suggest you like let's say even if you ask for movies like psychological thriller movies it will only be searching its 20 percent of the database and that's totally fine like at least in the initial few searches like first five six pages and if you keep scrolling down and if you need more movies maybe it can get those and if you click on those you might see some buffering because they were not already loaded into the CDN but that's totally fine because a lot of users don't do that Netflix tries very hard to deliver you means to deliver its users some specific number of movies some specific percentage of movies like 5% of the movies that is why they have the concept of top 10 trending movies in India why so that most of the users like 70% 80% of the users land on that uh, I don't think 70-80% of the users land on that but there is a very good uh, fair chance that uh, thirty percent of the users are watching movies from the top ten move trending movies in India, and then again, some you know we have number of uh, top list like uh, Academy movies and everything. In that sense, uh, it is a very fine estimate, and I would say this estimate is on the actually the upper side, right? So twenty percent of total videos. 20% of the total videos, total videos is 300 TB, 20% like dividing this number by 5, that's 60 terabytes of data, not a wild amount of data. Redis cache size, like we can put this uh, user metadata in the cache. One thing to note here is that we can have two types of Redis cache, like two category of data in the Redis cache. We'll, can use the same Redis server but like let's uh, say they are distributed across the globe and you have a Redis server for a particular uh, region you will have user metadata 
and you will have movie or uh, video metadata. The user metadata does not have to be cached across the globe. Like why do that? It's totally unnecessary because a user mostly will be watching the movie from one single region. At the same time, if even if they do travel from one region to another, uh, they will face like a few seconds of latency uh, and that's really fine, right? But uh, movies metadata or like videos metadata, we will have to cache across the globe because many viewers are going to access that. Uh, then we can also uh, like estimate the RPS on server like we have 10 million users who watch at least one video daily not at least we are saying like watching one video daily and they're making 10 call each for metadata let's say we are only ca calculating the RPS for the uh, our uh, this metadata part not for our videos because they will be directed to CDNs and we don't have to actually estimate the RPS for that. Uh, we are doing this uh, basically to select what kind of database we'll store for metadata like a SQL, NoSQL or something like Cassandra or whatnot. Columnar means. Uh, so 10 million users watch one video daily. So they make 10 call each for the metadata. That's a fair estimation. Uh, and that's like 100 million calls per every second. That is 1.1 K RPS for metadata. And now even actually uh, some percentage, say 80% of these will hit to, RP, uh, to our Redis server uh, that is caching our data and only 20% will move forward. So you can see that the data um, that we are doing, that we are fetching, we might even be making more calls, right? Like for personalization and for everything, all these calls will still go to our uh, uh, relational or non-relational database, whatever we pick for our metadata. But the point is, this is still very, very low RPS. Like even if it is 50K RPS, that is like almost nothing. Even until it reaches to something like a million, we are not getting very serious here. So we can choose any kind of database, Postgres, MySQL, NoSQL. You will not face issues with any of the databases at this scale. But still, uh, we can consider other points like if there are any, like we get to that in just a moment. Uh, next up, this is uh, like the important part. Uh, I al always like to discuss the protocol uh, that we are going to use to exchange data between the client and uh, whatever system we are building, the server. If I talk something about a messaging application like WhatsApp, we are going to use something like WebSocket. If you're designing something like uh, Zoom, WebRTC protocol we will use. So it is important that in this scenario also, uh, we talk about this, <clears throat> especially if it is different from uh, your HTTP call, regular HTTP call. So we have, okay, I've already enabled this. So we will use for video streaming protocols, we use HLS. Uh, this is for Apple devices and Dash. That is for all the other devices almost. Dash is something like dynamic adaptive streaming over HTTP. What does it mean by adaptive? Uh, Adaptive in the sense like when you have uh, a video, <clears throat> a video is made of, like I will just uh, mention here, like we can, let me, we have video which is made of frames, like in one minute you can have many, many frames, like in, like in one second you can have around 60 frames. So these are like images which are played one after the another. So you see it as a, a video actually. But these are all like images put together. And these images are made up of pixels, right? 
uh, pixels are small tiny blocks which represent your uh, image that is frame each of these pixel like every single pixel can be denoted by 8 bits 16 bits 24 bits why uh, the difference in bits like let's say you have an image and there can be uh, if there is a difference in bit there will be difference in the coloring depth right this this is this signifies color depth uh, like there can be much more shades of black if you use 24 bit in comparison to 8 bit so the point is the the higher definition is your video like something like 4k 4k will have a very high quality so it will have much more number of frames much more pixels much more bits like 24 bit or even higher bit and it will take much more time uh, or you can say bandwidth to transfer this video over internet whereas for something of uh, less quality like uh, 1080p it will take less time or less bandwidth in comparison to 4k right so depending upon your internet connection quality uh, this uh, protocol dash can switch between different video uh, videos like video qualities like let's say you have a very good internet connection but it is momentarily fluctuating and you are facing high uh, you are facing bandwidth issue on your internet because a lot of people are connected to the same wi-fi on your home or something or just any other reason so your um, dash protocol will try to switch between these two based on your internet connectivity and that is what dynamic adaptive streaming is whereas hls is uh, like it is designed by apple and in all apple ecosystem that is your safari browser or in apple you have to stream through this only so if you are uh, creating a platform like netflix and it wants to stream on uh, apple device through safari then it has to has to support hls so you need to mention these protocols because uh, and you can go in more even more depth you can also talk about uh, like um, optimization optimization is something uh, of the sort of file reduction like how is uh, these files when transferred over internet can be compressed one way to compress the files is uh, like if you have 60 frames very high frames then and you're facing low internet connection then for some time you can reduce these frames from 60 to like 40 you can reduce the number of pixels but you, if you reduce the number of pixels too much you will have a blocky problem like you will see blocky patches uh, sh shouldn't do that too much that's why bits you can like stream them down from 24 bits to something like 16 bits uh, momentarily right plus optimizations can be uh, plus if you are not aware let me tell you if the video is very much moving there is a fight sequence and everything is moving a lot then it will take more space but you if you have something like a very uh, like somewhat of a still image then it will not take much space because uh, many part of the uh, video are same and they do not have to be changed so that can be optimized uh, the algorithms that go behind these are complicated uh, not complicated but complex ma uh, mathematical algorithms but you can still uh, try to deep dive into those but this much uh, mentioning of about the protocols i think is quite enough for the interview uh, next up the storage which we can choose if we talk about the storage for the uh, storing of videos it's completely sorted we'll use a blob storage uh, like s3 or uh, google cloud storage and we will use cdn to cache them whereas on the video side it is fine if we go with mysql data because we do not have a wild amount of data and to have some structure uh, because the um, kind of data we are getting is very well structured we can go with uh, 
IDBMS database plus we can easily shard a MySQL data uh, base across the globe. Uh, we have to use something called Vitus when the um, kind of sharding is has to be at a very big level but that's fine we do have an option. Then if we come to the uh, tables, tables I'm talking about metadata tables uh, not about Cerium, like uh, not about the videos. Videos will go into the our uh, blob storage in Cerium. So we have, we are done with that. If you look at the meta tables, metadata tables, which we can chart on user ID, sort of on application level, I think that would be uh, fine uh, if we saw them on, uh, chart them on our application level. If, if you uh, like by chance not getting the point like how when can we um, shard these on application level I can create a video on that uh, let me know in the comments right uh, plus user user table we can have these basic details movie we can again have these basic details ID title uh, description tags not a big thing tags table we can have something like you know Comedy movies, uh, romantic movies, feel good movies, action movies, thriller, horror, what not. Uh, plus, we can have a movie tag table in which we will have a combination of these two, like a movie ID and a tag ID. Uh, movie ID can repeat in this, like a movie can be funny and an action movie, or it can be a horror movie and a funny movie. So we can have the tag ID there, connected with this. Plus, uh, we have to have the URL of the video, so we can create something like a document table of the type like trailer, is it a trailer or image or a video, even though we have not estimated the, the size of these two, but you can have type with these and the file URL. So you will pass this to the user and the user can try fetching the file. Stream high quality without buffering. Uh, it's worth it's worth mentioning a uh, few of the ways how we are actually going to okay let me move that out yeah it's worth mentioning that how we are going to maintain the very high quality uh, without buffering uh, so what is the data that we are serving we are serving the metadata we have already uh, considered that uh, not a lot of data that is one of the main point so we do not have to worry about the buffering part on the metadata at all like user metadata or uh, videos metadata plus we can shard this globally so uh, every time uh, we have to search in the database we are not searching the entire database just the specific shard of it which will reduce our searching time or fetching time of the data and other manipulations like writing we want to do or writing our update uh, then plus we have a redis cache if we are facing uh, high load redis cache will be able to cater to the 80 percent of the users if we have very well fine-tuned it uh, otherwise the request can come to our database which our database can easily cater to then we have our videos um, videos also once again i've told you like not a massive uh, amount of data amount of data in comparison to uh, something like YouTube or uh, not streaming at a scale of something like Hotstar that is 25 million concurrent users on Netflix we face something very low right sometimes rarely we have something like um, uh, what do we say Game of Thrones or something that is not on, on Netflix I'm aware but still something like that we can have which uh, we can separately prepare for we can look into that also uh, like uh, handling high load okay so i will mention a few points here but other than that we can have cdn for caching all over the globe this is the most fundamental thing that actually netflix does netflix does not use cdns of any third party like aws or google or azure it has developed its own CDNs and it has spread them across the globe. Do you know why they have their own CDNs? Because uh, CDN providers can also have issues.
like let's say you want to stream india versus pakistan uh, match and you you on the hotstar platform and the hotstar has to ask the cdn providers please provide me cdn machines uh, this much space i am requesting uh, during these these days the cdn provider might say that they do not have that much space in some of their locations like in few of the states they don't have that much uh, that would be problem for hotstar similarly it can be a problem for netflix as well like if uh, they want to stream very uh, uh, like videos at a very high scale for something like game of thrones and they do not get enough space from the cdn provider then that will become a very big issue plus because they have to save so much of such massive amount of data in cdns and their platform heavily relies on the sole streaming feature they have to have their own cdn for uh, cutting cost plus we are using protocols like hls and dash which are which have the adaptive uh, streaming functionality which i just discussed a few minutes back that also helps to stream without buffering flawlessly plus handling high load uh, we can mention a few reasons like you can do uh uh pre or you can say warm up cdns so you are not going to uh, uh, uh fetch the data from s3 on demand and load it into something like cdns when the user request the data you what you would do is like let's say something like game of thrones uh, episode is releasing on uh, 13th at uh, 10 pm what you would do is before that time among all the among all the cdns across the globe you will cache the episode right plus you can have some extra cdns uh, spinned up for particularly this use case or a few days when you have this uh, other time you can say scale them down uh, secondly uh, you can have something like what uh, is called uh, panic mode panic mode is something like you deprioritize or uh, uh, your other features when you face very high load on your system like something like um, streaming game of thrones so on panic mode what you would do is you non essential features you might deprioritize uh, that is like because you know 90% or even 99% of the users or a massive number of users will actually be using uh, will actually be watching uh, game of thrones episode so if the other users who are not watching this gets impacted a lot this is a bit of buffering for that particular day is not a drastically bad experience because it is just for a few days in a year or you can say in its lifespan it is not every day a, a game of thrones episode is dropped so non essential features um, like uh, personalization right uh, or you can say resume your content right uh, plus other kind of features like analytics and everything you can put on hold uh, and free your systems for other things because these kind of systems might also make calls to your database which would not like to have those calls uh, during such a high load <clears throat> Now let's look at the architecture finally very quickly. Uh, it's a sort of a simple architecture. I will mention a few things uh, <clears throat> how we can you know uh, improve on some of the aspects. First up is one second. <coughs> First up is the clients uh, that is our users. But then you can see we have mentioned the various CDN that would be across the globes. It is just one thing. You can assume this is not just one single register instance, but a entire cluster. Uh, same goes for the CDN. Then you have this IDBMS database uh, because Redis will fetch from these. These are sharded and uh, spread across the uh, globe in different regions. These are, this is also not a single instance, but a cluster in itself. Uh, this is video storage. You will have a central storage, uh, video storage, which will have multiple instances 
uh, spread across multiple multiple data centers for high availability and everything uh, but then you have CDN origin server CDN origin server has the responsibility of um, you know uh, putting the new content into these CDN caches uh, which are also called point of presence or as servers from which the client can fetch the data now if you look at this entire system where do you think if you would like to deep dive where should it be like what are the core features what are the core things that we are doing here one is cdn cdns are the heart of netflix when it comes to implementing or you can say streaming just basic simple streaming has to be done with something like cdns so if you're in uh, like you can speak a few minutes or explain in detail how cdns actually work what are actually cdns and that might you know impress or interest your interviewer uh, plus you can talk a bit about or have knowledge about these protocols that will also a bonus point uh, for you during the interviews these part uh, particularly look into the hls and dash uh, you know so that you have a few more lines and you can answer a few basic questions if asked during the interview because you are going to uh, mention these Plus, uh, what is not important is that how you're going to store your metadata, you're going to shard it or whatnot. This is not a core thing, uh, particularly to the Netflix. Secondly, uh, what is more, uh, what is important is this panic mode feature that we mentioned, you know, at the end, you can have many more things under the panic mode. You can create a list of what should be uh, deprioritized during panic mode what should never be deprioritized like streaming has to be the top priority uh, on second I think comes payments but even if payments are failing during that small period of time that's fine then uh, uh, what's more important is authentication authentication has to be has to be there but it is never more important than streaming like if you are aware about Hotstar when they faced a massive high load of 25 million concurrent users during something like uh, India versus New Zealand uh, semi-final match during 2019 World Cup they even let the users watch Hotstar uh, if authentication system is failing because they do not want there to be a cascading failure uh, across all the users and the streaming uh, the core features to be impacted so even they are allowing users to bypass the authentications. So you can make a list of that during your interview and show, uh, for your uh, interviewer to you know look at that, which might also impress him. Otherwise, uh, there is one thing that we can really look into, which will be great. That is searching, right? Like when users are doing these kind of things. Uh, you can one is that you can add something like let me zoom out a bit uh, analytics which will talk to the users uh, still not a very very important thing even if you don't mention it uh, I don't think uh, your interviewer will be less impressed but it's always good to mention if you have a few minutes on your hand uh, then you can mention something like notification system you can mention like how will these notification be, uh, be sent something like firebase to android users and uh, i think apple notifications apple has it's something of its own ecosystem uh those two things plus you can have a personalization service uh, these are uh, just microservices i'm just drawing out here like these are some of the things that you can mention a uh, interviewer will be impressed that you get actually think of those uh, after like just as final touches and you should not be diving deep into these but one of the most most important thing uh, is that you can look into this uh, if you're already very good with searching like a searching microservice which will search for the movies because we are going to pick a database something like or uh, elastic search which we always do in these cases uh, because it makes sense uh, and how is uh, how does actually elastic search works if you are searching for something that cannot be found in elastic search what behavior will it have 
some underlying functionality like what does it actually run on like something like lucene and a bit about its internal working and plus its characteristics at high scale like your interviewer might ask you to estimate like how many search hits we might be getting on this searching because that we can also cache if you want to reduce this um, reduce the hits on this plus uh, we should have a proper ttl time to live on those uh, caching which we'll have so this can also be an interesting segment so first segment that is important is like how to stream these uh, uh, movies with uh, low buffering right second is like how can we uh, fasten up our searches third if you would like to pick which will be like not very deprioritized like not very prioritized this like what kind of uh, notifications we would like to send sending notifications is a uh, system design question in its own but like what kind of uh, notifications you would like to send but that will now come into personalization right like to which user you would like to send which kind of notifications and on notifications you can again see that every time you'll send a notification more users can come into picture uh, and if you are already having a very high load would you want more users to come in actually you would because that will actually make your system more popular even though you have to pri uh, deprioritize and enter into panic mode and whatnot so with that this is the design uh, of netflix so hope you like the video if in case you liked it or have any suggestions do let me know in the comments if you want me to create a system design video on a specific uh, platform then uh, mention in the comments also like the video if you did like it and subscribe to the channel Thank you and that's it for this one.